All right, welcome back into Sikkim 365 Radio. Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina. We're talking Ode to Joy here in just a few minutes with the director himself. Premiered tonight here in Waco. And uh, got Grayson? Yeah, we do. We have Grayson Grunhafer. All right. So uh, we're now joining the phone lines by reoccurring guest, Grayson Grunhafer, Sikkim 365 Radio. And Grayson, a lot of movement going on. Uh, I guess let's start off with... Uh, we knew that Baylor was going to have to replace the safeties coach, and now it appears that they've found their replacement for uh, their safeties coach, uh, Dave Aranda, going back to the LSU well uh, to try and uh, you know get this staff uh, complete once again. Still have to now hire a wide receivers coach, which we'll be talking about, uh, I'm su- sure, shortly. But uh, what do you know about Ronnie Wheat, who is apparently going to be taking over for Matthew Pallage, not only with safeties, but also with special teams? Yeah, this is uh, an exciting hire, and I, I think the reason for it is because obviously there's a lot of trust built up between Dave Aranda and Ronnie Wheat, and I, I think that's why this hire happened. You know, this is someone that I think Dave Aranda has a lot of confidence in. I think this is uh, the natural time for Coach Wheat to have a role like this. I mean, obviously he was at LSU for seven years in various roles, was there for the national championship, moved on to Nevada, was there for two years. Uh, before making this move to Baylor. And, uh, you know, honestly, I I think it's a good hire. I I think for a position that's going to have so much responsibility with safeties and, of course, with special teams, you got to have someone that you feel confident can kind of do both of those at a very high level, like Matthew Pallage was able to do. And obviously, you know, Dave Randa feels that way. Um, I know I talked to one of Baylor's uh, commits who actually committed this week, uh, Tyler Turner, uh, the safety out of Brennan High School in San Antonio. Uh, and he told me that he thinks he's going to be a really good fit. They got on the phone yesterday and were able to talk, and that was the first time he's ever talked to Coach Wheat uh, and got to know him a little bit and thinks he's going to be uh, another coach similar to Dave Randa that's not going to be that yell-at-you kind of guy. He's not going to be that scream-in-your-face kind of guy. He's going to be a true teacher and a true coach at the position and really try to get the most out of his players. Grayson, uh, recruiting looks like they're, you know, 2023 starting to pick up. Uh, what's been the biggest get of the last couple of weeks? Ooh, uh, I guess in the 2023 class specifically, I mean, if we're going to say the last couple of weeks and last, I, I guess kind of just the, the path that they're on as far as the momentum and how it's gone and kind of um, the ebbs and flows of recruiting. I, I mean, you kind of have to go with Austin Novastat if we're going to talk, you know, weeks out. He committed – a little less than a month ago, and obviously he is the cornerstone of this class being a quarterback, a guy who's, you know, going to try to be a leader for this class, a true, um, you know, high-end guy who can really not only build a class because he's such a, he's got so many connections, he knows a lot of kids in the area, but also he's a really, really good player. I think he's one of the top two quarterbacks in the state for the 2023 class, and Baylor has already gotten a commitment from him. So, um He's the biggest one for sure. I mean, when you're anytime you're talking about a guy who I, I believe is a four star guy, like I said, one of the best quarterbacks in the state. Um, and obviously, Baylor didn't have a quarterback in the last class, so that position was the most important. So yeah, it, it's definitely him. Uh, but they're doing a really nice job building this class, uh, kind of in its entirety. They already have three guys committed in the secondary, and we kind of knew that was going to be a focus in this class, and it's definitely turned out to be that way. Were you surprised by kind of the sudden announcement of Chancey Stuckey leaving Baylor to go take the same position as wide receivers coach at Notre Dame? You know, actually, I wasn't that surprised when it was announced. I was surprised when I first heard that the interview was going to happen. Um, you know, I found that out relatively early in the week uh, from one of my contacts up at Notre Dame and kind of got uh clued off there, and that was really interesting. I, I didn't see that happening, but then on the flip side, you know, it, it's kind of one of those things where this happens, right? When you're a winning program, a lot of times schools are going to come in and try to try to land the guys who are successful on your staff. And it turns out, you know, Chancey Stuckey was one of those guys, and he's going to be at Notre Dame, and I have no doubt he's going to do a very nice job there. But on the flip side, I have no doubt that Baylor is going to go out and hire an absolute rock star for the wide receiver position. They obviously are going to focus in on that spot and really try to land – you know, a high-profile name, and we'll see if they're able to do that in the near future. Grayson, uh, what are you what are you hearing on the transfer portal? 
Yeah, guys, this is actually a, a big weekend, right? So uh, next week is when the transfers who are enrolling in the spring will enroll uh, at Baylor, Baylor Lansdeny. So I, I believe that will be Tuesday. Um, and there are two important decisions coming up in, in regards to Baylor. Uh, so the first one is Jackson Player, uh, the Tulsa transfer defensive tackle, played high school ball at Midway. Um, really, really good player. He's proven that he can play uh, at the Power 5 level with what he did at Tulsa. Really made himself an all-conference guy. Um, it would be a great add for Baylor. Uh, Baylor wants to add more depth on the defensive line, and he would definitely uh, bring them a, a high-end depth piece, and he'd be, in my opinion, a starter, obviously, for this Baylor team next year. Um, and it looks like he's going to be down between Baylor and Arkansas. And Arkansas is getting the last visit. They're going to get that visit this weekend. Uh, Baylor, actually, the past couple days, uh, Jackson had been on his official visit at Baylor. So uh, those two visits back-to-back, we'll really get to know what Jackson is going to end up deciding. Uh, I believe he will decide on Sunday and then enroll at the school of his choice on Tuesday. Um, the other decision that is also being uh, one that I'm closely monitoring is Oklahoma transfer cornerback Latrell McCutcheon. Uh, he went to high school at Austin LBJ was a four-star cornerback in high school, played his true freshman year at Oklahoma. And now with Lincoln Riley leaving and Alex Grinch leaving, he decided to enter the transfer portal. And so I I think he is between USC, Baylor, and LSU. Uh, That's kind of the vibe that I'm getting. Uh, He visited Baylor this week. uh, And so there's obviously that part of it. Um, But then he's going to USC this weekend. So it's kind of this reoccurring theme that Baylor got guys to visit but they didn't get the last visit so we're going to kind of see how that plays out uh, for this Baylor staff um, and how they're able to seal the deal with these two guys who would be massive pickups out of the transfer portal obviously Craig you and I have talked about this a lot but they have to land a cornerback mm-hmm. at least that's the, the feeling that I'm getting is that they really want to land a proven cornerback out of the transfer portal and Latrell McCutcheon would be just that. Grayson Grunay for Sigum365.com. Grayson thanks a lot we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right. When we come back, Chris Charles Scott tells us what it's like to, to birth film triplets tonight. This is Sick of 365 Radio, 365 Sports.